Hi everyone, my name is Isabella Suslawati. I'm an excellent Power BI enthusiast with decades of business experience. There are so many different maps in Power BI. We have map, fill map, and shape map. We also have Azure map and Argus map. And if you click that three buttons to get more visuals and then type map in there, you get all these options. What's the difference between each map? Which one is most useful? Which one is the easiest to learn? If you want to know the answer to those questions, you have come to the right place as we will cover each one in this video. These three maps, map, fill map, and shape map will all be discontinued. The replacement has been announced and that is the Azure map. It will stay. And the other map, which is Argus map, will also be staying. It won't be discontinued in the near future. And I'm making this video as of February 2024. If you open up Power BI reports, which were previously constructed using map, fill map, or shape map, you are likely to be greeted by a prompt that says, introducing Azure map visuals and announcing that the default map visuals will be automatically converted into Azure map visuals within the year. So our option is click upgrade map right now or wait and just click not now. Now, some of you may be feeling apprehensive. What's Azure map? What's the difference with existing maps? Will my maps be broken if I click upgrade now? In this video, we will explore the features of various maps in Power BI standard visualization, the three maps which will be discontinued in the near future, map, fill map, and shape map, as well as Azure map and Argus map, which will not be discontinued in the near future. Given that three types of map will be discontinued, is it still worth learning? The answer is yes, but only if you are likely to inherit an existing Power BI report which utilize these older maps. If not, skip through to section 4, the Azure map. Let's explore the first one. This is a map. Let's click the visuals and hover to the right. You can see map is being grayed out. So we know that this visuals is just a map, not fill map, not shape map not Azure map and not Argus map for Power BI, just a simple map. And using a simple map, we can display the number of shops in Australia as dots, the different type of shops as different colored dots, when it's a joint venture, red dots, when it's fully owned, it is blue dots. And then the size of the dots represents the sales dollar associated with the shops. So, for example, Western Australia over here, the dots is small because the sales is only 320,000. And then we have another shop over there with bigger blue dots because the sales is bigger, 1.9 million. Yep. And then if you click this dot, you can see it interacts with the table on the left. And then if you want to clear the selection, just click anywhere. So this is just a map, a simple map in Power BI. We do need internet so that we can zoom in or zoom out. Yeah. Without internet, this doesn't quite work, unfortunately. With maps, it is quite flexible. You can change the color of the bubbles by clicking colors and then just change it to whatever you want. And then you can also change the style. You can make it Arial. You can make it dark. You can make it light. You can make it grayscale like that, or you can make it roads like this. Yeah. So there are many options style for you to select. And then with regards to the controls, which is these three icons over there, you can make them disappear if you want. So if you turn them off, then it just looks like this. So it doesn't quite zoom. And I like to make them on so that we can see better. And then there is also options around legend. You can change the position of the legend. At the moment it's top left, you can make it top right, for example or you can make it at the bottom as well if you want. Yeah. And then the text you can change the font and the color if you want. And then the title you can change that title as well. You can make it disappear if you want, 
or you can add legend for example like that so i'm not going to do that just play around and then the bubbles as mentioned earlier you can change the size of the bubble make it bigger and then you can change the color over here and then category label that's basically showing the address of this location if you want to but that's too busy so i don't want to do that so that's how you can modify it and then with regards to the input you just really need the address for legend the shop type and then latitude longitude and then the bubble size is the sales and then the tooltip count of shops and that's it sometimes we want to display two maps side by side so that on the right you can see the bird's eye view and then on the left you can see the zoom in view so we can zoom in to many different cities to see the locations of the shops and the street nearby such as this sometimes you want to display pie chart on a map such as this this circle is now showing sales by sales type food and furniture the food is in light blue and furniture is in dark blue and then interestingly you can drill down and when you drill down you can actually see the shops as well so click to turn on drill down it says so let's drill down and now you can see two shops the various sales split and you can go up again so it's quite a useful features to have because now we can see in new south wales three shops and the various split by sales type in each shops and if you're thinking how do we create this it is automatically created if we remove from the map the sales type watch this it is now normal dots but the moment we click and drag sales type it goes into the legend and automatically the dot become pie chart so it is quite easy to display and create pie chart in our visualization the next visuals is a field map when you click the visuals you hover to the right you can see that's a field map and the input is simple the location which is state and the state is what we can shade with various different color and then if you want to you can add some legend at the moment i'm not adding any legend and then latitude and longitude are optionals but very useful to make sure that your chart is more accurate and then you can add the tooltip sales and shop number if you don't like the color, you can modify the color, go to format your visuals and then click fill color and then just click that FX so that then we can define how do we want to color the shading. There is format style, which is either based on a rule or gradient. At the moment, I'm selecting gradient. If you select it based on a rule, for example, you can define when it's greater than or less than a number, what's the color. So let me just switch it back to gradient. Let's make it white and then the highest make it red, for example. So now that changes. If you want it purple, just click it one more time and make it purple again. Now that's back to original. Yeah. And then if you click the map settings, it's similar to before, there is an option to change the style yeah and then with regards to control that's the same as before you can turn it on and off so it is really similar to the previous setting yeah once you know how to use one map you tend to know how to use the other type of map as well because they are very very similar the next map is a shape map shape map is very similar to field map the difference is we can zoom in so in a way it is probably better to use a field map if what map that you want to use is available in the field map. For example, if it's just Australia state. But there is a plus of shape map because you can make your own map and then load it. So in the map setting, yes, we have some standard maps by state, but there is also an ability to create custom map. If you are not intending to customize, my recommendation is to probably just use field map because there is more flexibility to zoom in, zoom out and do other stuff in there. Let's look at Azure map together. If you are just getting started in your Power BI learning journey, our recommendation is to start learning Azure map. Given that map, field map and shape map will be discontinued 
and will be automatically converted to Azure Map by Power BI in the near future. So the one map to learn and to master is definitely the Azure Map. Let me show you an example of Azure Map with bubble layer on. What does it mean? It means that each location is being shown as bubbles in the chart. The first cool thing about Azure Map, as you can see, that's Azure, is there are many different styles that you can select. Look at that. Lots of options. So many options. Oh, that's really, really dark. Yeah. And as you can see, lots of different options, even more than what we had in our previous map. Now I'm going to switch it back to roads for now. In terms of ability to zoom, it is quite similar as before. You can zoom in, you can zoom out. This map also interacts with the table. So if I select different things in here, as you can see, that kind of like zooms, yeah? So very, very similar in terms of functionality. Now, the other things that it can do as well is this ability to tilt the chart. Look at that. This is like three dimensional viewing. Yeah. And then we can also rotate it. Okay. But I'm going to keep it straight. Yeah. And then the last ability is the selection mode. There are many options. Let's just show everything first. With selection mode, you can use circle. So that circle, for example, that will just ACT and New South Wales. That's the filtering. And then you can, for example, do that one, which is just going to be South Australia. And then you can use rectangle if you don't like circle. So for example, Victoria, as you can see, that's now filtered. And then this is called polygon selection. So with polygon selection, it doesn't have to be kind of like a circle or rectangle. It can be any shape, for example, like that. Yeah. Oops. Now with polygon is a little bit tricky. You need to select the shape. And then after you finish, you need to kind of like double click at the end. That's now ACT Victoria New South Wales. Yeah. So that's really, really cool because it means that you can do this. For example, you want everything except ACT. So that's what you can do and double click once you finish. Look at that. Isn't that awesome? And you can also use this range selection mode. And in here you can select by distance, for example. So let's move that icon. Let's say we move it into ACT and we're going to select area within say two hours. So 120 minutes and then search. And that is basically two hours within ACT. And if we want to modify that, let's make it 600 minutes or 10 hours and then hit search. And there you go. 10 hours from ACT is now selected. So it's so versatile, lots of different way of selecting or filtering our charts. Another exciting thing about Azure Map is this concept of layering. So when you click the map and then click Format Visuals, you can see lots of layer option that you can turn on and off. At the moment, bubble layer is on. When you turn it off, the bubble will disappear. Just watch. Yeah. And you can replace that with 3D column layer, for example. The bubble that was displayed earlier is now being replaced with column charts. And you can also add more things so that more than one layer is available or is visible. So for example, I'm going to turn on bubble layer and traffic layer. And then I'm going to zoom in to New South Wales. Now I can see traffic. So that green lines, it means that traffic is clear. Whereas the orange lines, it means that we've got traffic jam. Yeah. And with traffic layer, there are also options to display incident or traffic control. You can turn it off if you want or turn it on. When it's off, you don't see the accidents. When it's on, you can see all these things. Yeah. Oh, well, it says unknown. Okay, it says there is danger, traffic regulation has been changed. So whenever there is something special, for example, like this one, roads is being closed, it's also being displayed. That's the incident. 
There are so many possibilities with layering, bubble layer, 3D column layer, field map layer, heat map layer, plus reference layer, tile layer, traffic layer, as shown earlier. Wow, just so many awesome possibilities. The last type of map is an Argus map, which is powered by S3 and also available outside of Power BI and is now integrated with Power BI. So if you're used to using S3 and Argus map, then it's similar feature. If you're not used to it, I don't recommend that you start with this one because this is a little bit more complicated to learn when you are quite new. But if you want to do more, then absolutely. If you want to do more with map, this is definitely an option because there is just so much more that you can do. So this button in here will show options available that you can use. For example, you can select location in your layer. Yep, just like before, you can select and it will filter your other charts. And then you can use a different way to select like before. You can use rectangle or you can use polygon just like before. Remember to double click to finish the polygon. Or you can also use this circle. Look at that. Oh, how cute is this? Yep. Now, with regards to showing where we are on the map, you can find address or place or use current location. And then layers, you can do more. You can hide and show various layers after you load them. And then in here, there is option to change the color scheme so that you've got different options. Yeah. I'm just going to flick it back to light gray. And then in terms of the set things, there is options to merge the data with infographics, information, population, income, etc. We need to do a different video to illustrate the power of Argus map in Power BI. And then many, many, many different options. There is drive time layer, just so much more that you can do with this. And then there is also some help button. Yeah. We are not going to go through that today. I just want to show this for awareness that Argus and S3 map are integrated with Power BI and available for you to use if you want something more powerful in the future and if you want to amalgamate external and internal data into your map visualization. I sincerely hope that this video has allowed you to feel more comfortable and more familiar with the various different maps in Power BI visualization standard options. As mentioned before, there are many more map options available if you click get more visuals and type in maps. There is icon map, Google map, etc. We're not going to cover all of those in one video, but I promise I will make more video in the future so that we can all learn more about the many different map options in Power BI. Now that you have explored various different maps in Power BI, what do you think? Do you have a favorite? Which one would you like to learn first? If you're just getting started with Map in Power BI, my recommendation is to start learning Azure Map as this is the map that Power BI will retain in the future. Once you have mastered the Azure Map, then you can explore other types of maps such as the S3 and Argus Map, as well as additional maps in the custom visuals. All the best in your learning journey and see you next time.